decision is reasonable. Um, in my mind, it's utterly unreasonable. I don't, I don't know how you justify it, except if you look at it as politics, in which case I think it lines up pretty perfectly. Um, but you, you have a guy who 11 months ago, or a collection of guys 11 months ago, were ready to plead guilty and proceed to sentencing. Um, we've now not only pulled the plug on that military commission, which is a perfectly adequate, constitutionally valid way of addressing uh, national security problems in wartime, a, a system that we've actually used since George Washington used it during the Revolutionary War. Uh, and we have essentially moved that case into the civilian system where they will not only get the full bells and whistles criminal trial, where they will not only get the exact same rights as the Americans that they're sworn to kill, but in the, in the military system, we could force them to take a military lawyer if they wanted to get access to national security information so that we wouldn't have to give it to them we would have to take whatever was necessary for the trial and give it to their military lawyer with the security clearance who could, who could process it and use whatever information was validly uh, part of their defense. In the civilian system, the Supreme Court has held since 1975 in a case called Ferretta versus California that if you declare your intentions early enough, you have an absolute unqualified right to conduct your own defense. You do not have to take a lawyer. So by moving this case into the civilian system, we have now set up a quandary where if Khalid Sheikh Mohammed decides he wants to be his own lawyer, which is what he decided uh, in the military system, um, we either have to let him be his own lawyer, as the Supreme Court has said, um, or we have to try to deny him access to the classified information, which will create probably a reversible error on appeal um, in terms of denying him his due process right to conduct his defense. So we've taken a situation where this case should have been over, uh, and we've set up a situation where they're going to get a two-year opportunity to climb through our intelligence files. And we know they use these intelligence files to, to edify their Confederates on the outside. We know they do it because they've done it repeatedly. Um, and at the end of the rainbow, it's a, it's a crapshoot about whether they'll be convicted on everything we'd like to convict them on, and we have to hand them directly our, NASA, our national defense information. So, you know, I know there are some people out there saying this can be justified. I don't think it can be justified. I think, though, that it can be explained. Uh, the Obama administration, uh, from the time before it was an Obama administration, from the time of the campaign, has promised its base what Eric Holder in June of 2008 called the reckoning. That is their plan to hold Bush administration officials accountable for what we like to think of as the policies that kept America safe for the last eight years and what they like to think of as war crimes. I believe what's going on here is the same thing that's gone on with the shoveling out of our, of our classified information from the beginning of the Obama administration. For example, the, uh, you know, the, the Justice Department mem memos that uh, justified and, ad and explained uh, the authority for the interrogation program. All kinds of internal um, legal memoranda that have backed up the uh, surveillance program and other of our uh, counterterrorism measures since 9-11. Uh, uh, since um, what happens when this information gets pushed out is it gets scooped up by the same left-wing lawyers that are defending the enemy combatants at Guantanamo Bay, just like many of the lawyers now running the Justice Department, either themselves or their firms, worked the last eight years representing America's enemies in litigation against the American people during a war against the United States. The left-wing lawyers take this information and they run to Europe and they're trying to get uh, international tribunals or foreign countries to bring war crimes indictments against the Bush administration. This proceeding, which does not have to happen because the case should have been over about 11 months ago, is going to be the mother of all disclosures as far as that is concerned. Because they'll now not only get to go through all our national security information, they'll get the witnesses, they'll get the testimony, it'll all be put out in open court. The 
defense in the, in the case of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed will be to put the government on trial. It's, it's defense lawyer 101 that when there's not a lot of mystery about whether the defendant's guilty and when there's controversy attendant to the way the government investigated the case, what you do is you put the government on trial. Uh, and that's what will happen. But in this instance, when it happens, these lawyers will be able to take the information that comes out in the American courtroom as a result of this decision and use it to bolster their call for international war crimes tribunals and international war crimes cases against the Bush officials who made the hard calls that were necessary to keep this country safe for the last eight years. Now, am I a conspiracy theorist? Um, I, was, I was actually a pretty successful conspiracy theorist as a, as a prosecutor. Um, but I, but I don't think this is crazy conspiracy theory. I think that, you know, if it, if it walks like a duck and it, it talks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it, it's probably a duck. Uh, we've been saying that about Obama from, from the beginning, and, you know, I, I think we ought to regard this uh, as the same sort of thing. Um, this is part of what I think you should think about as an overall framework of using international uh, proceedings to clamp down on American rights and American self-defense. And we see it not only in, in the way that our, our counterterrorism strategy of the, uh, of the last eight years is now under assault. We see it in the First Amendment context in libel tourism. We see it in uh, UN resolutions that, that target American free speech rights uh, under the rubric of defending Islam. We see it in a dozen different areas. I think you have to look, I, my time is up so I'll, I'll end with this, but I think each time a situation comes up where it's clear that our ability to conduct our natural right as a nation to self-defense, each time that's under assault, um, the encroachment comes not from a, a military enemy that can defeat us on the battlefield. Uh, it's a lawfare approach and the front is international law and the place where, the, where it's mostly being fought out is American courtrooms under circumstances where at one time the American legal system and the American courts understood themselves to be a part of the United States government. Uh, and now, instead, their self-image is of tribunals that serve not the American people but sort of stand over and above the government that they were once part of. Um, and they're basically the forum where the world gets to make its case against the United States. Um, and that's where the challenge comes from. Thank you.